In one word, what does performing on the stage mean? Exploration. Open. Hoping. Redemption. Freedom. Music is the shortest path to opening up your feelings and your emotions about yourself and others and the world around you. I think when you hear music, you react to it physically and emotionally before you react intellectually. And so having those feelings just happen uh, is, is one of the great powers of music that sets it apart from other art forms. Becoming a musician is, is, a, is, a, is a choice. Uh, you know the path is going to be tough, yeah. and so it's a big sacrifice and a big kind of uh, move. Wh what made you, you kind of uh, say, I'm going to do this? It's actually when the first time I ever played chamber music on stage, when I feel the connection and communication between players and the communication between the players and audiences. That's something that I feel like is very valuable. I just started exploring music in elementary school with like choir like recorder and then i just wanted to continue that um when i got to middle school and here i am now music for me is food for the soul um, i think it's everywhere um, in our heartbeat in the breath and beyond that in in times when we can't be physically close i think it's a way uh, to connect this connection is really something the musicians feel right. that's very special. Yes. And I think, personally, I think it's related to something very primal, yes. um, the, new, the idea to do things together. Yes. Even uh, animals, uh, right. fish yeah. or birds, move in these, these situations. And it Angles. seems like a, it's a condition of living that we have these connections. Even if kids don't become musicians, like it's almost like that like old Greek um, concept of like catharsis and it gives people a way to get out their like i guess negative emotions like fear like rage things of that sort or even sadness or happiness as well it just allows people to have a way to express themselves and to become better members of society i feel like the stage carries a lot with it that's passed down from one generation to another, mm -hmm. one world to another. What traditions do you think we could leave behind mm. when we come back? Mm. I think um, there are a lot of wonderful things happening in, in the music world right now um, that, that reflect, yes, the, the larger society. Um, I think what we could offer now at this point is an invitation. Um, when we return to the stage, um, an inclusive space, a space where everyone feels that they have a seat in the concert hall, um, so to speak, and the greatest seat being being on stage. I feel like some of the traditions that we hold in classical music can be somewhat alienating, you know, to many people. And I would just hope that in the future we can kind of make those like make those things more inclusive for other people not even necessarily just for race but just in general so 
offering people an opportunity to, to hear themselves, see themselves reflected in our art form the same way we walk through a gallery space and see images um, that remind us of ourselves. I think that's uh, the most valuable thing we can bring back to the stage. Let's talk about music as protest. Mm. In various times in history, uh, music was specifically written for protest, from Woody Guthrie to certain blues narratives to the 60s, which had such a massive soundtrack to a massive social movement, mm. to the 80s, where certain things in hip hop brought a world to light that many people didn't understand quite in the same way. Classical music perhaps hasn't had an incredible protest history. <laughs> right. Maybe. I would, I would say that um, there are some standouts and some highlights in the sociopolitical history of classical music. Of course, in America, at least, it seems that we have this um, romanticized obsession with the music of Shostakovich. Um, but I think that he's um, the poster boy for a, a, an aspect of classical music that doesn't just start and end with him. Uh, however, I'd argue that um, the popular music development, as you were saying, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, I think um, is an era of music that we should all be paying more attention to um, when it comes to music as protest. Um, in the Hearn that we're performing, uh, we kind of reminisce on that era um, and that's a way of learning about our past through music um, and learning about the history of music as protest.
but it's the breaking chisel. Girl, he just pushed our phone, but it's the breaking chisel. Girl, he just pushed our phone, but it's the breaking chisel. But I got it. Girl, he just pushed our phone, but it's the breaking with the ring. Girl, he just pushed our phone, but it's the breaking chisel. Girl, he just pushed our phone, but it's the breaking chisel. But I got it. Girl, he just pushed our phone, but it's the breaking chisel. Girl, he just pushed our phone, but it's the breaking chisel. Girl, he just pushed our phone, but it's the breaking chisel. Girl, he just pushed our phone, but it's the breaking chisel. Girl, he just pushed our phone, but it's the breaking chisel. Girl, he just pushed our phone, but it's the breaking chisel. Girl, he just pushed our phone, but it's the breaking chisel. Girl, he just pushed our phone, but it's the breaking chisel. But I voted for Shirley Chisholm. Uh -huh. Break with them, break glory 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 with them. Let's talk about music as a political thing. Uh, do you think there's a space for music to be political in the classical music? You know, because we're a museum, we're preserving this long tradition. What we're talking about now is how that tradition might change. Yeah. But, and music unites, but it's also very powerful to give voice to the voiceless. Absolutely. I think that classical music has always been political. I mean, with the uh, Black Lives Matter protests, it brought in this new wave of questioning the way classical music has run, you know, questioning the power structures, questioning the repertoire choices, questioning um, who gets what opportunities. I think music has a very strong sense of emotion and comfort, and also of a radical sense of presenting not what is happening in the world and it gives people a way to express what is happening and to speak when there are no words left. The power of a stage is the power of having people who will listen to you. It's the power of saying I want to see these changes in the world. I have the power to say something and I'm going to use that power to the best of my abilities. I'm going to use that power to move the world in this direction. I think for me personally, and for every student I've talked to, they are thinking of coming back into whatever normal will be, changed and different, and with a lot of ambition about the future mm -hmm. and having the future be different for classical music. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel that way? And, and when you come back, what are you bringing with you? When I come back, I am bringing the voices that have not been heard at the same time as not tokenizing those voices. 
It was my idea to perform a recital this year um, with only works by composers of color. And then I took a step back and I realized that, well, while that kind of programming may be useful right now to give immediate voice to these um, composers that have not been performed as much as um, their white counterparts, is it really the way forward if we just do that now and then go immediately back to whatever normal was? I think the way to really move forward is to not tokenize those voices, but rather add them into our collective canon and give them the same place as music by composers that are white or that are men. Seeing all different points, points of view, you know, like if I'm just with people who look like me or sound like me, I'm only getting one side of the story when there's really 30 sides of the story, you know. We've all had uh, intense experiences during the pandemic. Uh, you mentioned specifically being in Minneapolis mm -hmm. in the middle of, of the George Floyd um, murder. Mm -hmm. uh, did it affect you as a person, obviously? What about as a musician? I live in the suburbs, but my, I'm from the city. My cousin's house, they didn't have a post office. Their post office got blown up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it was, um, it was really kind of uh, jarring. And um, being a citizen, it, it, it meant something different to be a citizen of Minneapolis in that time, especially a white citizen. Um, because I think we were all finally realizing things that had been obvious to us before, but not directly impactful. And as a musician, I kind of felt like this is what I'm going to be talking about or kind of communicating about on stage for um, the remainder of my life is partially this experience and what it meant because I knew that I was a part of something big being mm -hmm. from somewhere that was so impacted, yeah. With how politically uh, <laughs> complicated America is right now, I think, I really think that music is a way to kind of get past those differences. Um, my family and I, during the pandemic, when everything was like totally shut down, we, we played together on our front lawn in, in my neighborhood. And just down my street, we had Republicans and Democrats and conservatives and liberals. Like we had everyone and <laughs> every single person came out and listened and we totally forgot about everything else. And it was just nice to remember like that we're all just people and, and music was the thing that brought everyone together. So I think that's really special. Frederico, we were talking about this piece by Coleridge Taylor Perkinson that we've been working on. And um, you told me you liked it a lot. Yeah. Uh, and ha is he a composer you had heard of before? I've never heard of him. Um, I was, very pleasantly surprised when I started working on it. I had never understood why I'd never heard such a great composer and the works that he's done I've never encountered in my musical education. And just from working in the SFCM orchestra, I found that it's been very rewarding to discover such a great piece that I think should be performed more often. I think there has been a lot of misrepresentation of black composers and people of color and I feel now that there has been such social injustice and racial injustice and a division in our country I feel that this kind of programming of works that haven't been represented for decades and even centuries has been why I've um, discovered Perkinson. So I believe nowadays like especially very exciting to be part of the project this weekend to play a Parkinson's piece, which I, I haven't heard before actually. It's a huge excitement to play this piece. And I, I just know he was a African-American composer and uh, we should really like open up the horizon of music compositions. And uh, I, 
I really think yeah, it's a really good idea.
In one word, what do we want this space, the stage, to become? Sanctuary. Intimate. Sacred. Vitality. A platform. <laughs> 